So first of all, I feel like I need an oncology. My brows are not as cute as cats. <laughs> so I don't have cute pictures to show you, but hopefully you'll enjoy the talk regardless. So it's great to be here again. It's my second time actually. I'd like to thank Scott for the invitation. Back in 2012, when I was here for the first time, it was actually when we were launching the project. So it's so great to be back here three years later to report our success story and share with you guys. So first of all, I'd like to start um, with the, so uh, I should first introduce my OSD. It stands for Ocean Sampling Day, which is the citizen science campaign for the OSD project. So first of all, I'd like to start with the did you know section that we present our citizen scientists with. So um, I'm sure we're, we're all aware that 70% of the whole planet is covered with water. But if you go um, over these numbers again, then hopefully you'll understand the, uh, the importance of microbes as well, again, together with me. And then, uh, well, this water is mostly oceans. And oceans actually contain 80% of all life on Earth, which is quite a uh, big number. And on top of that, oceans generate 70% of the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, among many others, but this is of course the most striking, especially to catch the attention of our citizens. So what gives oceans so much power? Well, if we look at them under the microscope, it's the marine microorganisms. Well, did you know that one drop of ocean water contains millions of microorganisms? So there's a lot of activity that's going on there. So what do they do? Some very basic um, uh, features. So they use all sorts of energy sources. One of them is the sun. And by using the energy from the sun, what do they do? They play a key role. They actually establish the basis of the food change, chain. There's a lot of species that plan microorganismic activity. And as we said earlier, uh, it's microorganisms activity that contributes to the generation of O2, nitrogen, and so on, in Earth's atmosphere, which is as high as 70%. So basically, every second breath that we take comes from oceans, from microbic activity. So this means that microbes and ocean has a really close relationship, and it is very important for us to understand the mechanistics in this relationship to be able to address big problems like climate change, ocean acidification, and so on. And to date, we have only uncovered 5% of microbial life in oceans. So we still have 95% to go. So there's a lot of work to be done here. So all these ideas gave birth to my OSD. 2014 was actually was the first place when we launched it a little bit later about um, the evolution of our project. But in 2015, we um, had the slogan of Unmask the Invisible Heroes of the Ocean and Put Your Stamp on the Global Map, which turned out to be quite effective. So now I'd like to take a step back and talk a little bit about OSD and what its aims are. So Ocean Sampling Day is actually part of Micro B3 European Framework 7 project. So it was launched back in 2012 with the aim to obtain a snapshot of the marine microbial biodiversity and function of the world's oceans. So OSD essentially is a data provider for the Micro B3 project. I'll go back to that slide, but on that note I'd like to briefly show you the organogram for the Micro B3 project. It consists of 32 partners uh, consisting of experts in a uh, marine field from all sorts of places. <laughs> As, oops, sorry. So basically, if we can take a quick look, you can see there are people from uh, their experts in standards, bioinformatics, biotech, ecosystems biology, all the way to, if you look at the bottom there, we're package eight, intellectual property. So we even have a team of lawyers there to make sure that our participants are always covered legally as well, ensuring that they have the right forms to sign and so on. And Ocean Sampling Day is the one that aims to be the data provider for Micro B3. So back to this one. So how is Ocean Sampling Day different to other initiatives? 
Well, it is standardized, which means we have everything from our sampling protocol to shipping to participation to submission of data as well as environmental data are done according to certain standards, which uh, some of this was also published. And it's orchestrated, which means everybody gets together and collects samples on the same day across the globe. And the date we picked was June 21st, which is solstice of the year, which uh, research has shown that the highest amount of microbial activity happens on this day. It is open access, which means that all the data will be submitted to public databases and shared, including our protocol. So the other aim of the project was actually to provide everyone with a platform to be able to do a research like this. Now everyone has access to our sampling protocols, shipping protocols, so everyone could repeat this sort of initiative even outside of the OSD and microb 3 framework. So to make it live outside of funding, hopefully. And with all these aims, it turned into a global mega sequencing campaign. So back in 2012, we started with only 20 participants. And in 2015, we currently have uh, more than 200 research teams globally that have registered to take part in the project. And we actually have a bigger idea behind the project, uh, which is to establish a network of long-term monitoring sites. So with this, in parallel to Ocean Sampling Day, we also established the Genomic Observatories Network. So with this, the idea was, uh, so around 20% of the participants we have are actually already long-term monitoring sites, like sites from LTR networks and climate change networks, who are already doing long-term monitoring and collecting samples every week. And the rest of the 80% are brand new sites. So we wanted to provide access and opportunity to um, uh, brand new participants as well to be able to instill this sort of um, motivation to them to look into long term monitoring of their own uh, sites as well. So, this resulted in a couple of publications. Final one being in Giga Science, where we established the charter of the Genomic Observatory Network, and this has around 170 authors on it, which are all our participants. So, how does it work? Everybody collects their samples. So everybody sends us their samples. Uh, we ask them to send us two samples at a minimum. One of them will be used for sequencing. Uh, the DNA extraction is uh, taken care of uh, by the ocean sampling day team. Um, and the other sample will be sent to a bioarchiving center. So this is another uh, achievement we're very proud of. We have an in-kind agreement with the Smithsonian Institute. Uh, based in Washington, they have agreed to uh, provide bioarchiving facilities in their brand new biorepositories for all OSD samples for at, uh, for at least 10 years. Uh, and on the other hand, environmental metadata needs to be provided by all our participants, which will be submitted to public databases, so Pangea, and then from there it automatically goes to CDataNet, Eurobiz, and the sequences will be then submitted to ENA. And all the submission, everything on this side, is automatically taken care of by the OSD team. So our participants never have to worry about any of this side of the world. All they need to do is basically ship their samples, their filters physically to us, and we take care of the rest. And when I say sequencing, what do, you, what do I mean? We use Illumina MySeq platform to perform 16S sequencing, as well as metagenomics sequencing, and this is all in-kind. So our participants take part in the project voluntarily, but in return, they get free access to 16S results and metagenomic results, which is a big opportunity for many other participants we have on board. And uh, we also had a collaboration with PacBio, who provided us with SMRT sequencing, as well as LifeWatch for some eukaryotic sequencing, which doubled and tripled the fame of our project, so we're very happy. So we have OSD Sites Registry, which is essentially a database that contains all of our sites with some basic information. This is all public. Everyone can go on this website and take a look at our participants in detail. As I said, we started with only 50 mid-2013 and we currently have um, around 200 sites in there. And this is the actual OSD map, which indicates uh, EEZ zones as well. This is a very special map and we almost got into trouble for showing this map in one of our conferences define an easy zone, that's on the big debate, you shouldn't, you should be careful. But um, it, it's a very good though. It's, it's, uh, it's not surprising to see that most of our participants are from Europe in the European project, but with our US 
collaborations. We also are quite popular in the US. But the biggest take home message from this is that we're proud to say we managed to hit all seven continents. We even have participants here in the Arctic. The only bit that I currently are passionately trying to achieve is Chinese participation. We had a lot of interest over the past few years. However, due to legal issues, this was not possible. But this time I'm very pleased I have already six really passionate participants. Two of them are in the crowd somewhere over there. I saw them earlier. So hopefully we're going to manage it this time around. Right. As I mentioned, we have a team of lawyers uh, who are very active and they helped us to establish an access benefit sharing help desk. So what we do is we don't expect our participants to fight all these uh, legal battles. So as soon as they tell us that they're interested to participate, we put them in touch with our ADS help desk, our lawyers, and they help them to fill in and get permissions for three very important documents. So one is access benefit sharing that uh, informs everyone that they will be doing some genetic research. MTA, which is Material Transfer Agreement, to make sure that transferring uh, samples of our carbon at Smithsonian is safe and the government will be happy with that. And data policy, basically to say that they are happy for the data to be shared publicly and for it to be open access. That's about it. Some publications here, so as I mentioned, we have a dedicated team for standards. So after consulting the community, so with the United States community, we currently have around 600 very active people on our mailing list. And in every step we took, we made sure that we took a detailed consultation and feedback from the community. And with their help, we established a new standard called M2B3, uh, which ensured basically that the mandatory data would be easy enough for, to be collected by every participant. And with this, from uh, past events in, from between 2012 and 2015, we managed to get 100% success with the environmental data, the mandatory ones returned, which is not easy to achieve at all in, in this field, to, to convince people about the importance of environmental data. Um, and after the 2014 event, we also formally established the Ocean Sampling and Consortium, and we published this in Giga Science. And again, this publication has about uh, 200 authors on it to show people the spirit that we will always be um, sharing the work we do together and giving them credits and announcing the OSD consortium power. And back to my OSD, Citizen Science. So it all started it right before our 2014 event when a group of sailors contacted us. And they said, we heard about your project, it sounds excellent and we would like to contribute. How could we make that possible? So we believed in the power of citizen science and we immediately put our heads together. And we started with a smartphone application called OSD Citizen App. You can find this both on Android and iPhone. It's a very simple app to allow our citizen scientists who have access to any sort of marine water to go out and provide us with very simple um, environmental data like latitude, longitude, a name for their site, um, and some very simple measure, measurements. And to be able to allow them to do measurements as well, we provided them with some very basic kits to measure phosphate or nitrate. And it turned out to be quite successful, even though we had very little time <coughs> for our event. And we received 120 individual submissions. And it allowed us to actually cover a few spots on the map that we were not able to before. So we thought, <coughs> okay, we should, we should definitely give a session and make it even bigger for MyOSD 2015. But in the meantime, we had so many passionate people on board, marine enthusiasts, they said, how, how about we also collect samples? We, we want to do more. So we thought, okay, fine. We, my OSD team got back together again, and of course collecting samples and to be able to facilitate this with citizens and scientists is not an easy task. So we thought, we will sit down and devise some very simple basic sampling kits for them, and we will be able to distribute this which look like this, a log sheet for them to log down their environmental measurements, a handbook, which I'll talk about uh, in a bit, filters for them to filter DNA out of it, some tubes, plastic bags, some uh, gloves, ethanol, RNA later to preserve their samples later on, and some syringes. The next thing we did was to put together a My OSD handbook. So we already have an OSD handbook, which is about 60 pages long. We made a miniature version of this. 
which looks a little bit like this. Uh, it's about a 15-page document with very detailed instructions, but it says a one-page summary for the eager ones, <laughs> which has a summary of 12 steps. So basically, it's a 12-step procedure with uh, very detailed um, instructions. And we made sure we circulated this well ahead in advance of the event to our minor state scientists and got feedback from them. Other things we did was uh, we prepared a video tutorial, which is our coordinator jumping at the end of the video. It turned out to be very famous on Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, and then we made sure to have our website in multiple languages, which also proved very useful. In the meantime, we managed to secure sponsorship from Millipor. So if, if, in case you noticed, we use Sterex filters, which is the part of making our sampling protocol standardized. This is the only uh, mandatory criteria that we have. And we were very pleased to uh, secure sponsorship from Millipore, who agreed to provide filters for free as much as we need for our um, project. And well, the killer idea was to come up with MyOSD hubs. So uh, what are MyOSD hubs? And, well, we thought if we need to circulate these kits and handbook and all that stuff, to reach out to citizen science individually might be a little bit of a difficult one. And also, to, super, to allow them to do something in a supervised fashion might be a little bit tricky. So we went ahead and we asked our existing OSD participants whether they would be interested to turn into my OSD hubs. The majority of them said yes. So what did we do? Then we ended up distributing our my OSD sampling kits to the all registered my OSD hubs. My OSD hubs then distributed all of this to their citizen scientists. And they arranged training for uh, their sampling procedure. And on the big day, they all went out sampling together. And this included all sorts of people, uh, kindergartens, primary schools, just people interested. And I must say, our OST participants did an amazing job spreading the word and bringing in more and more people to participate. It turned out to be a big success. And then after sampling, our citizens returned their filters marine water samples and metadata to their MyOSD hubs. And then the MyOSD hubs ship <coughs> the citizen scientist samples together with their OSD samples to MPI, which is the Germany-based Metaplant Institute where the um, headquarters of the project are. So with this, our citizen scientists also did not have to worry with shipping. So it turned out to be a big success. We managed to establish 31 MyOSD hubs uh, from 19 different countries. You can find the full list. Uh, uh, stops the them. Here is the picture of 270 MyOSD kits they are about to be distributed to the hubs. So in every hub we had many, many citizen scientists. Here are some pictures of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram uh, was formed as well as some, uh, there were lots of press releases as well. So it, it turned out to be a really big global uh, success story. And you can see um, pictures from all sorts of places. Azores, Morocco, Israel, I think this is UK, Antarctica, Spain. So uh, uh, along with um, sampling kits, we also sent lots of stickers, t-shirts, posters, flyers, all sorts of materials. And people did amazing use of them. They even did their additional material. It, it was very emotional for us to see how people went out of their ways to show their passion for the project. And here's a picture of what they looked like when they were returned. Because in 2014, we asked people to ship the samples in dry ice. So this is the coordinator of the project, actually, Professor Frank Oliver Glöckner. That's his PA, Sandra. <laughs> and they had lots to carry back to the lab. And this is a snapshot from the lab right before DNA extraction. They are the stereo filters that contain samples. And we love showing this picture because just by looking at the filters, you can already see the diversity, the difference between different, I mean, if you just look at the color and see how much diversity is there. And results of stats, so uh, with 31 MyOSD hubs from 19 different countries, we had 192 samples returned from 270 kits, which translates into a 71% success rate, and we think it's a really good number, and we're very, very excited. And this is just a picture from a MyOSD kit after uh, success Germany. I'm currently in charge of the OSD Analysis Consortium, uh, leading analysis of all the OSD data to date. And even with this, we thought we should keep the open access spirit of, of the project ticking. And we thought rather than carrying out the analysis ourselves, 
We should send out an invitation to the entire community and invite people for a collective analysis of the project. We received around 50 proposals, a lot of interest, and currently we have around 130 plus experts on the consortium. And with this, we grew our expertise much wider. We now have oceanographers on board, physicists, all sorts of people that are interested in ocean data. And we're looking into all sorts of different uh, questions. And we will, uh, we're actively in progress of formulating our uh, results. And we hope to uh, share our results with a paper within the next months to come. If anyone in the audience is interested to take part in OSD 2016 or my OSD 2016, you can contact us or you can just simply come and find me after my talk. And thank you very much for your time.